Okay, so um, this should hopefully be a pretty quick video. I'll try to keep it under 10 minutes. Um, mainly what I wanted to show you guys is a, a fairly simple use case um, around how to use Git and how to integrate that with GitHub, um, which is pretty simple. It's only a few commands. So on the right-hand side here, I have my terminal. And on the left-hand side, uh, I have my IDE uh, VS Code open. And so what I want to kind of go through is a, is a hypothetical scenario where I've written a program. I'm going to write a very simple program, um, and I want to uh, make it open source and get people to contribute to it. Uh, so maybe this program will be pretty simple. I, I think it'll have, some, it'll have something to do with cats uh, for sure. So let's go ahead and um, print my working directory. OK, so I'm using Windows. So I'm in uh, Ubuntu, which is kind of this virtualized Linux environment within Windows, so home-christian has no meaning to, uh, to my Windows file system. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to create a new working folder um, on my desktop, but I'm going to do it through Ubuntu. So I'll change working directory. Um, MNT is a directory that's a um, mount, stands for mount, and it's where Ubuntu is mounting the C and D drive. So my C drive, um, I happen to know that it's C users, capital U, and then it's double tab here, uh, Chris, I guess, that's my name, and I know it's desktop, capital D, and let's go ahead and change that, great. Let's clear it to give us some room, and I want to make a directory called catlab. Okay, that's what we're doing, and then I'll Go ahead and change to that. Um, touch cats.js. Touch the cats. OK. So I went ahead and just made that file. I'm going to jump over to VS Code. I will um, open folder. There's CatLab. Select that. And there's our file. Great. OK, but we need some code. Um, this program will tell us about our cats. Okay, just in case we happen to forget their likes and their dislikes. Really, it's not the point of this video, so um, I'm going to move kind of fast. Um, don't worry, you'll understand how to, how to do all of this very soon. Let's declare an array, call it cats. Okay, what should be in this array? Well, we'll have some cats. And I guess cats need, they don't need a name, but we like to give them names. That'll be a string. So let's make this cat tabby. And then maybe it has some likes. And those likes, for now it's just maybe, it's just a single string. Tabby likes catnip. All right, so that's what Tabby likes. Um, let's go ahead and just make a few cats here. OK, another cat. Let's name him Bob Ross Cat. And Bob Ross Cat doesn't like catnip. Bob Ross Cat likes paint. And let's name another cat. Um, Chaos. And Chaos Cat likes knocking over plants. It's not very nice, actually. OK, what do we want to do? Our program is simple. It's going to loop through them. Uh, I equals 0. It's going to loop through all the cats. Uh, cats.length and then increment a counter. It'll loop through all the cats and we're just going to print out um, for each index, which is i, the likes, the cats likes. What do they like? Okay. This is not good at all. It's actually not going to be a very useful program, but either way, it doesn't matter. Let's pretend that this is 
is what it is. Let's save it. Okay, great. Yay, JavaScript. Uh, come over back here to our uh, console and let's go ahead and run it in Node. Okay, yeah. So probably would want to say the name. Um, oh gosh, this is getting, this is gonna get, okay. Just because I'd like it to actually be a, a useful program here. <laughs> it's not gonna be useful at all. Okay, so I'm doing string interpolation. Um, so let's do cats um, for each cat in index dot name. Okay, likes. So that'll say tabby likes catnip. Okay, all right. All right, let's do it. Let's run it again. Perfect. Okay, so now that's a little better. So tabby likes catnip. Bob Ross likes paint, and chaos likes knocking over plants. Okay, great. This is so great. We want to share it with the world, um, or at least you want to you want to share it with your friends um, and have other people build on this. Uh, so. In this case, what we want to do is we want to initialize this directory, CatLab, as a Git, Git repository. So um, let's see here, go back here, right. So I'm assuming you all have github.com accounts because we're going to jump into github.com in a second and, and create a new re repository and um, push all of this code over to that so that we can share it with people. Um, but for the moment, let's go ahead and just do git init to init that as a git repo. That's fantastic. And then git add dot, which will add everything there. And then we need our commit message. So git commit dash m. Let's try to make something meaningful. Um, added cat likes cat like function okay that's what we did okay done so you'll see it says one file changed 11 insertions that's 11 lines that it added which is exactly the amount of lines that we have there um, good 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 and if we were to make a change uh, another change to this file um, we would need to uh, do another uh, commit message as well. But for this one, we're going to do our initial kind of our initial commit here. So that's good. Let's go over to GitHub. There we are. So I already logged in. Um, so we're going to go up here, your repositories. I could have clicked new repository right there as well, but let's click new. Let's wait a little bit. Okay, so cat lab. That's what we're gonna call it. That's our repo name. And let's leave description blank. Make it public, of course. Uh, don't initialize it with a readme or or a license. Uh, we're gonna do that in the lab just so you can see um, how to sync uh, repos that that you create. Um, but to make it easy, we're just gonna create our repo. Okay. And so here GitHub basically tells us what we need to do. Um, all right, git init, git add, they want us to add a readme file. Um, and this is how you can create a new uh, repository directly from the command line. But we've done this kind of thing before. So what we want is we want the um, URL for the, the repository we just created, and that's right here. You click this and take it to the clipboard go back to our terminal and we need to do this we need to get remote add origin and then we want to add origin the origin will be that git repo that we just created on github really good okay let's check it out remote um, git remote sorry git remote dash v Okay, looks like our origin is set. Um, you don't have to do that, but it's good to check. Uh, and now let's do our first push. Git push 
origin, which is um, the github.com URL here. And we want to push on the master branch. Don't worry if you don't know what that means, but um, the master branch is just the main branch of your code, the master branch. Um, OK, enter. Now, depending on how fast your computer is, it's going to ask you for your username. It's my username. And it'll ask you for your password. Um, and let's see, I'm going to turn off my, my um, screen logger. So that I'm not printing out my password. Okay. Great. Done. Okay. So we have a total of three objects. And let's see what those are. So what I just did there was pushed. So that's a git push. Um, and pushing git push is essentially what's pushing our changes along with that commitment message uh, to the GitHub repository that we created. So now if I go to CatLab here, you see it's here. And I, I said, added a cat-like function. I didn't set my name. So that's also something else that we wanted to, because otherwise nobody knows who actually um, made this change. But there's my file, and here it is on GitHub. That's pretty cool, right? Um, if we wanted to change our name, uh, we could just go to Google and figure out. Okay, so GitHub, git how to set name, to set name. And there it is, user.name. Great. So let's actually do that now because I think it's important. Otherwise, people are going to say, who's using it? It will ask you when you're setting up Git for the first time um, to set your username uh, and your email. So you won't be able to do this, uh, this push until you've actually set your username and email. So let's do git config user.name. Christian, that's good. OK. Now, if we try to push, let's do this again. Everything's up to date, so we pushed nothing. But that's OK, because what we can do is let's just say we added we added another cat to to the mix here um, and it's not chaos it's it's patches and patches likes um, cuddling okay cool okay so if we were to go back to our terminal and say oh let's push Watch what happens. Well, I think you know what's going to happen. Maybe you don't. Everything up to date. Wait, what happened? OK, so when you make a change, we need to do the following. We need to get add. And then we need to commit our changes. Um, added a new cat. Friend. Okay, that's going to be our commitment message. Okay, so one file change, two insertions, one deletion. Okay, um, I think that one deletion was the comma. Okay, either way, that tells us we have a commit. And now what do we need to do? I'm just pressing up to push. So we're going to do another push here. I know this may seem annoying, but uh, it's actually quite important that you have a username and password before you push to your source control. OK, pretty cool. Resolving deltas completed with one local object. And there it is. So when you see things like writing objects 100%, you know you're in good shape. So now if we go back to GitHub here, and we take a look at CatLab. OK, this is good. So my name is there. It says added a new cat friend. I can click this. And this is another aspect of source control that's great. So it tells me what I deleted. And then it tells me what I added. And you notice you can even tell my coding patterns here, because I had done a copy-paste. right? 
so you can see what had been deleted and what had been added. And so I think this already is is mega powerful, especially when you're working with other people. They can see what the heck you did. Um, what did you add to the code? What did you remove from the code? Um, so that, that becomes very, very useful. And so this is a pattern that I want all of you guys to be following um, quite a bit and get into the habit of it because uh, your, your GitHub or the, your use of source control is going to enable you to participate in lots of different open source projects. It's going to enable um, other people to participate in your projects. Uh, so I hope this was helpful. Um, there's a lot more resources, and we'll talk about them later. Thanks.